Welcome to The Situation Room. I'm James Carey and I'm all about helping you write better sitcom scripts. And in this series, we're looking at five mistakes in the first 10 pages of your sitcom, but actually I've thought of a sixth. And it partly comes from another video I did called What Makes a Truly Great Sitcom. Here's the mistake and then I'll explain it. The mistake is this. Mistake number six, you're writing fan fiction and not a sitcom. You're writing fan fiction and not a sitcom. What I mean by that is this. You love sitcoms, you loved watching them as a kid, uh, you love watching them now, you love new, watching new ones, old ones, you collect them, maybe you've got DVD box sets of them. And uh, you even love the ones that don't really work, you really cherish those uh, strange, quirky ones and you want to write them. Why wouldn't you? So you're in love with the form and you're trying to create your own. And this is where a lot of people start. In fact, I did this. In fact, uh, fan fiction, by the way, is technically writing something from another existing universe or franchise. So uh, if you're writing Harry Potter short stories because you love Harry Potter, well, that's fan fiction that you're writing. Uh, you're not allowed to make money off it because it's not your intellectual property. But people do it because they love it. In fact, when I was 18, I wrote a fan fiction episode of Blackadder, except it was set during the Norman Conquest and Baldrick manages to shoot... Uh, Harold in the eye at the Battle of Hastings. Uh, I know, great idea, although I now realise that it's basically the same as the first episode of the Blackadder uh, series at the Battle of Bosworth. Uh, but I didn't care, I loved the show, and I wanted to have a go at writing my own thing. And so I just sort of put words into the mouths of characters uh, that I really, really loved. Now, this is not to be confused with a spec script, which, uh, to be honest, isn't quite such a thing anymore. And this is a particularly an American phenomenon where you show your credentials as a writer, but you're writing an episode of an existing show to prove that you can write in someone else's style and that you're able to join a team or a table of writers uh, on a sitcom. So that's kind of how, you know, American shows tend to be written by eight, nine, ten people. And so uh, you would prove your... Uh, abilities by writing a spec, a Fraser script or a Seinfeld script or a friend script or something, quite often not of the show that you're trying to, to work on. Um, in fact, sometimes I'd rather prefer you do that. We could talk about that another time. Now, in a way, a spec script like that is a really good exercise to do because you're taking proven characters and a proven situation and um, trying to make it work with a new story. And so in a way, you've, you've all the uncertainties have been taken out. It's a bit like riding a bike with stabilizers on. So that's what really uh, a spec script is classically, although these days it usually, mean, usually means just a script that it's a sample of your writing, a, a complete episode. But anyway, maybe it is that you love sitcoms and you want to create your own. You want to be a sitcom writer and you've come up with a situation that feels original with some characters. You've got some stories, you've got some jokes, and that's all fine. You've assembled something that looks like a sitcom. Now that doesn't make it a sitcom. The problem comes when you send it off to producers and enter it into competitions and it just doesn't get anywhere. It just doesn't, it doesn't shortlist, it doesn't get any interest at all and you can't figure out why because in your mind it looks exactly like the shows that you see on TV and in fact in your opinion it's actually better than lots of the shows you see on TV. But what you've got there, as it becomes obvious in the first 10 pages, is that you've written fan fiction. It's a love letter to the art of sitcom, but it's not actually a sitcom in its own right. See, truly great sitcoms, as we saw in the video of that title, go and look at that uh, if you like. Truly great sitcoms have a timeliness about them, or they're about something timeless. And they're about a particular kind of relationship expressed in a new way, or they're about a new situation that's arisen in society, or a character we've not seen before, but it feels of the moment. In short, a sitcom needs a reason to exist. And you can't speak a sitcom into existence by saying, here are some characters and here's a situation, here's a plot and here's some jokes. Now, if I asked you what your sitcom's about, you might say, it's about a car mechanic, hilarious. And you point out there are three guys in boiler suits who are, you know, who are idiot and idiots and funny and they do banter and that kind of thing. There's, they've got a tow truck, there's a receptionist and occasionally the MOT inspector turns up or whatever. And there's a story where they realise that a spanner's been left in the car and that the car is now a death trap and they have to get it off the road without admitting they made a massive mistake. Um, OK, so there's some sitcoms character and a, and a plot. 
Well, that's a sitcom and a plot that could have been in any sitcom about car mechanics for the last 60 years. It's not enough. It's not enough. You've just assembled some ingredients there. It's fan fiction because you, you want to write a sitcom and you've, you've, you've found these, this situation, these characters. So my question would be, what's it really about? And the answer cannot be car based because no one really cares about cars. Not really. Cars are always a symbol for something else. So in Top Gear, for example, uh, cars are a symbol for freedom. The show has a very strong sort of libertarian uh, bent to it, or at least uh, it used to anyway, when Jeremy Clarkson was doing it. So what's it all about? What's it really about? So is it a show about a father and two sons and he can't decide who should be in charge when he retires? OK, well, that's not great. That still feels a bit, uh, a bit done before, but it's a start. It's not about cars. Is it about a guy who's too old for cars, uh, the cars that they're producing now? Because nowadays cars require laptops and coding and reprogramming. And that's a whole new ball game. But he's in denial about it. And he won't listen to his daughter who is trying to modernise the business. OK, so that's a show about modernisation and not, not admitting you're getting older. Or There's a, there's a number of permutations there. Um, is it about a guy uh, or is it about a woman who's great at fixing cars, but no one will take her seriously? even though we live in a world where she thought that we'd achieved some kind of gender equality or equity and that that had all been settled. Is it about someone who fixes cars um, and classic cars, but he doesn't because he doesn't want to live in the real world, in the modern world, uh, because he doesn't want to face up to some awful truth about the world or himself, or maybe he had a traumatic experience or something. So he's retreated into this world of cars. Doesn't really matter, you know, those are the kinds of things that your show should really be about. And do you know what? If your script has a really clear, strong reason to exist, a clear viewpoint, and it feels of the moment, the person reading that script will probably forgive you making at least two of the first five mistakes that we've talked about. Even if it's a mess, even if it's just a series of uh, jokes and, and situations, if there's a real heart and soul to it, if it feels like it's saying something about the world we live in today, then actually they might overlook it and your script might do better than possibly it even deserves, but because it's about something. So um, that's what my mistake number six is. Look at your script and ask, what's it really about? And you need a really good answer. And if you don't have one, you're just writing fan fiction, which is OK. It's good to get it out of the system. I did that. Get used to character situations, writing dialogue, all that. It's like your own spec script. Um, but you probably need to start again. In which case, I've got a video course coming for you, which arrives on the 7th of January, 2021. There'll be more videos about that in the future. So subscribe to the channel to find out more. But it may also be that you've got a script which is fixable. It is about something um, and uh, you want to, you know, really give it the best chance, in which case my handy guide is called Seven Ways to Improve Your Sitcom Script Right Now. Uh, it's a PDF, uh, seven things you can do, clear action points. Get hold of that and get your script sparkling. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I really want to help you with your sitcom script, so do subscribe and I'll see you next time.